CTE Pro 1 True Series, video 14. We're going to take a look at straight in shots. Those shots that are perceived as having a center and center cue ball object ball relationship to the center of the pocket. Now, if we have a dead 100% perfect center to center relationship to the center of the pocket, we can say that we have a zero angle. But there's a problem with that in play. Our vision cannot see angles. So we have no way of knowing if this is a zero angle or not. We have no way of knowing. I have no way of knowing whether this poses a slight left cut or right cut. Maybe a cut so minute that it's just all but imperceptible. Maybe it's a quarter of a degree off. If that should happen, CTE will straighten the shot out for you should you choose the aiming edge that goes against the slight cut uh, that exists between the cue ball and the object ball. Now, in the world of CTE, Straight in shots, those shots perceived as being straight in, fall in the 15 degree perceptual category. Straight in shots always have outside pivots. Now, before we get started with straight ins, I thought it might be just a little bit interesting to go over a few tidbits concerning some notes that I took at Hal Hool's place so back in 2007 when Landon and I visited there. Uh, when we first arrived, I'll never forget, Hal went through a pretty good uh, quizzing session with Landon asking him about how he aimed and such. That was very interesting. It wasn't long before Hal got into center to edge aiming. He knew that's why we were there and he shared with us that he got a call from the Philippines about four individuals from there meeting him in a California pool room for going over his center to edge system. Uh, I wrote some names down here. One was definitely F and Ray S. And I have a couple of other individuals here that I will not mention. And there was an English gentleman along. Now they met in a California pool room for a very brief time. And I can assure you that there are at least two things that Hal Hool covered with them that did not take a very long time to share. Hal shared with them that the real way to aim is with the edge of the cue ball. We always had two edges, a right edge and a left edge. The aiming edges are for aiming at three object ball aim points that are always located in the same place, at the quarters and at the center. Those object ball aim points are always in the same place. That's not a long lesson. That's a very simple lesson. You can bet your bottom dollar that Hal told them to get their nose away from center for seeing those aiming lines. You can bet your bottom dollar that Hal shared with those individuals that from that position, a solution to the shot, one line, would be available for any cue ball object ball relationship. In other words, the stepping process would naturally unfold. So, I can tell you, line up with right cue ball edge to object ball C, and it will show you the exact solution for this straight in shot. Something else that I'm 100% certain as well that Hal shared with the Filipino foursome. I'm certain that he shared that when you're looking at a cue ball object ball from a relation, from an offset, that a gearing process between the inside of the cue ball and the outside of the object ball 
naturally occurs. So I'm sure he dialed them into that uh, occurrence that happens between a cue ball and an object ball. Hal said their lesson was of a short duration. Hal was always fond of the Filipino players. You know, they came in motivated with a desire to learn. Think about that. Their meeting was arranged from the Philippines. They met in a, that their, an effort was made to meet in a California pool room. I heard this story more than once. Many of you have heard this story. So I turn the pages. Hal shared with Landon. You can't put your face right between the center of the cue ball and get sent to itch to work. This is in quotations. I took 10 pages of notes, by the way. You have to move your head to see the exact edge. Well, we've covered that, haven't we? I'm using right edge to see here. My head has to be moved. Moved where? away from the conventional center. When I'm in full stance with parallax vision, my head has to be poked to parallax. So that head has to be moved. You know, Hal also talked to Lane and I about what he emphatically said. He said, very, very, Few of the pros have aiming systems that resolve center cue ball. He said, except for just a few, like the Filipinos. At the time that we went to see how center to edge aiming was perceived publicly as having a half ball dividing line as if in all shots were center to edge as if in SP30. I asked Hal directly about that. Hal shared that he did not teach the one half ball look or visual as the dividing line. I, I remember, I made a note here with brackets around it. I, I, I said, that's very unnatural for me. So, um, what prompted me to really bring these notes out was I remember that, I, I look at them every now and then, that we discuss straight ends. Because, if you, if you see centered edge for all shots, I wanted to know if, if he would look at center to edge for a straight in shot. To me, that was the one that I wanted to know about. That was, the, that was one question that I wanted to ask. And so he's already answered part of it because he said, no, I don't look at the half ball uh, dividing line for all shots. I don't look at a half ball perception for all shots. So that's a big clue there. But concerning straight in shots, and I quoted this, look at the edge of the object ball. I said, well, I can make a hundred straight in just aiming my old, aim, uh, old way. He said, well, I can make a thousand with centered edge in a row. I, I was being the best detective that I could be, getting as many clues as I could possibly get. So let's take a look at uh, probe one concerning this straight in shot. Just set your cue ball, object ball up, 
as centered to center as you possibly can to the center of the pocket. Using a laser uh, is a good idea. That's what I did here. But that, in no way does that guarantee that it's perfect. Uh, my cue ball object ball separation here is about a diamond and a, almost a half. So, you know, that's good. You can go a little closer, a little further. I wouldn't get any closer than, I wouldn't get any closer than this. This is close to a diamond and a half, so yeah, I would keep it at least at a diamond and a half. So let's take a look at probe one. For straight in shots, those shots perceived as being straight in, as having a center to center relationship with the pocket, you can choose your aiming edge. Uh, I can use either aiming edge equal doesn't matter to me. Over time, you will balance out your approach for playing using center to edge. That's one of the beauties of center to edge. You learn to use your head this way. You learn to lose, use your head this way. You learn to come in this way. You learn to come in this way. You learn to use your right eye for aiming. You learn to use your left eye for aiming. You learn to use your right eye for sighting. You learn to use your left eye for uh, sighting. So you learn to play with your arm in the out position. You learn to play with your arm in the in position. CTE seeks to widen your visual and physical abilities, whereas conventional aiming seeks to narrow what's possible with your vision to a single conventional alignment resulting in a physical target shooting type alignment. Not so basic CTE. You're going to widen the scope of your visual and physical uh, skills. Pro 1. I'm going to start off uh, using the left cue ball edge for aiming at object ball A. So I'm going to angle my head this way. So I'm seeing this as a left cut. So I have left cue ball edge to object ball A. Sight line is center cue ball to right object ball. Uh, SP15 parallax inside cue ball quarter to object ball quarter. Now the way I see this ball. I see it as a cut shot to right here. So it's the end of the pocket. Meaning, I need an outside pivot. These type shots always have an outside pivot to correct the thin alignment. So, Pro 1. There's my parallax. My sweep is going to be to the right. It's just going to be a bend. So I'm going to step the cue ball to the outside. So when I step the cue ball to the outside, and I've already, I've already done that right here, I have a perfectly straight center-to-center -center alignment to center pocket, regardless of whether it's dead on or not. Now, it's up to me here as a human being to take care of the rest of it. So I'm going to sweep into that line, unangling my head. Now let's go to the Pro 1 uh, right cue ball edge to object ball C alignment. So this time my head's going to angle to the right. Right cue ball edge to object ball C. There's my parallax inside cue ball quarter to object ball core. Sight line center cue ball to left object ball, SP15. I step the cue ball from the outside. There's the solution to the shot. So this time I'm going to do that left physical sweep. Here we go. My head on angles. So even if 
if there did exist a minute fractional degree of a cut to the left or the right, the process of gearing straightens it out. We'll get into gearing a little bit more as we get further along. Okay, let's take a look at basic CTE. Let's start off with the left edge. So, this is a little bit uh, cumbersome for sure. Left cue ball edge to object ball A. There's my sight line. Now, when I dual focus loop, I can see the sight line, and then I can shift my focus for seeing the nissel, the shot line. Or I can focus back to see the sight line. So I can see that sight line and then see the nissel. Then the sight line, then the nissel. The nissel is based on this outside uh, stepping of the cue ball in relation to the object ball. So um, I can focus between those two lines. I call that dual focus looping. Head, head to the uh, left. Now, I've got to go in, angling my head further to the left to maintain parallax. I'm going to take my Q alignment, my pre-pivot alignment, to be one half tip outside of the sight line. I'm going to start stepping the cue ball to the outside, placing my bridge V on that line. Then when I pivot my Q, my, my right eye is going to be dominant for seeing down the nissel, my arms in the out position. I might want to pretend for one moment that I'm going to hit all these balls perfectly square because I'm in an extremely conscious mode at this point. Let's take a look at the right. Now, one thing that's worth noting here is that when I is that when I pivoted my arms in the out position, and my right eye is dominant for seeing down the missile. Okay, right edge to object ball C. Now my eyes are reversing roles. Uh, right cue ball edge to object ball C. There's the sight line. There's parallax. Okay, I'm a little bit off there, so I'm just going to I'm going to regroup. Okay, there we go. Right there. Right cue ball edge to C. Center cue ball to left object ball SP15. Parallax inside cue ball quarter to object ball core. I've stepped the cue ball to the outside. The nissel is based on this outside edge here. 90 ticks this way. My cue is going to be in the end position. My left eye is going to be dominant for seeing down the missile. Okay, so I've got to re gear, re step. I take that back. I don't step up here. Even though I can, in basic CTE, you should step in full stance. I'm not for sure what I did on the first one, but this is going to be a one take video. So, as I go down, and my cue, I'm having re-gear here. My cue goes to the outside of the sight line. I'm going to step by looking at the left edge of the cue ball. Okay, there, there's the perfect relationship for pocketing that ball dead center. And it's, the cue's in the end position. My left eye is dominant for the shot. So it's just up to me from this point as to whether I can hit it dead straight or not. There's no target on the object ball, even though the relational line is center to center, or somewhere around center to center. Could be a tick off one side or the other. The target is 90 ticks away from the outermost uh, left side of this cue ball. Okay. Let's take a look at 
disguise pivoting. Remember in the notes that I just read that Hal told Landon, look at the edge of the Omsi ball? Actually, there's two edges that you can look at. There's two ticks that you can look at. There's the, and those two ticks are, are, are those two edges. Are that, but, there's two edges that you can look at that can be described as ticks. Those ticks have different locations. One rotational tick is at the SP15 position. So, for basic CTE, when I'm when I'm using the left edge and I go down and I get everything geared up, that tick for SP15 is perfectly rotated, which also means that the outer rotational tick for the right side of the object ball is also in the perfect rotational position for establishing the 15. So, when Hal said to look at the edge, an edge is a tick and a tick is an edge. You really have the option to look at the SP15 tick or the outer edge tick. I would absolutely tell you for uh, Pro 1 and for basic CTE to look at the SP15 tick. Now for disguise pivoting, I catch myself looking at both ticks. It, it happens so fast, it, it may be in a, a hundredth of a second. I mean it's that fast, boom. So when I'm, when I'm looking at SP uh, left edge to A and then right object ball SP15, almost simultaneously I can glance over at the, at the rotational tick for the outer edge of the object ball. And I can, I can see that both ticks are in the correct place. The tick for the SP15 and the tick for the outer edge. So I could look at one or the other, but of, of late during my play, my mindset is just to pick them both up. It's just that's something that's naturally uh, uh, unfolded for me during my play. So, for disguise pivoting, I'm picking up the nissel just immediately. But I've already seen the nissel. In other words, I've already seen my 15 degree perception and the nissel. That's how quick it happens. There's, you shouldn't ever think that rhythm and the speed of application for CTE is an issue because it's not. Now, anytime you're learning something, there can be baby steps and, and hurdles that you have to clear in order to get your skill set put into place. But, boom, it's done. I can go right to the step center. Okay, so for this 15 degree uh, left perception, I'm just going to sweep. I'm going to sweep right into the nestle, and my focus is going to be to some degree on the inside of the cue ball gearing with the outside of the cue ball gearing. Because I want to catch both of these ticks. I want to catch this tick for SP15 and this tick for the outer edge. So here we go. As I go down, my arm's going to be in the out position, just like uh, basic CTE. My head's going to be poked. It's going to be my right eye that's dominant. My arm's going to be in the out position. Okay, from right there, from right there, I can gear and re-gear by looking at the inside edge of the cue ball and at SP15, or I can even look at the outer tick on the object ball. So when Hal said, look at the edge for straight in shots, I'm pretty sure he probably was referring to the outer edge. 
But at the same time, he would say, you don't always look at the half ball dividing line. So when I'm setting up for a 15 here, there is no half ball dividing line. So if I want to bring this outer edge into play, it's, it's for its rotational tick value. When that tick is in place, the SP-15 is in place. So, here we go. So I'm going to go right to the, I'm going to go right to the missile. And now I'm going to gear a little bit. Now what happens when I gear? I'm looking at the inside of the cue ball and the outer edge of the object ball at this moment. Okay, now, the outer edge is in place, SB15 is in place, the balls are properly geared. I'm at the center based on the outermost edge for the right side of the cue ball. That's why my arm is in the out position. I've discussed this in my book. The straight in. I think I listed several things that I learned over the years concerning straight ends. You know, my book was written over a period of six years. If if I could just take my book right now and magically write one more thing in it for straight ends, I would say for disguised pitting when you're in full stance, look at the step center and the outside rotational tick. Which is, and, and I did get that in there. I was able to put it in there, but uh, I, I, I didn't develop it, but it really doesn't need developing. Uh, so, let's take a look at the right cue ball edge to object ball C aim point. So now my head's going to be angled this way. Okay, the cue ball, everything's stepped. I see the perfect shot line. I have the right cue ball edge to C, parallax, inside cue ball to object ball core, sight line SP15. If I want to notice the left outside tick here, it's also in place. Now, so I'm going to go down to the nissle. This time, the cue's going to be in the end position, and my left eye is going to be dominant for this shot. So, so when I go down, I'm going to actually, this creates the need, this movement into full stance creates the need for me to do some, what I would call micro gearing in order to re-perfect what it was that I saw while I was standing. So how do I gear? The inside cue ball edge in relation to the outer left cue ball edge. I will never lose sight of SP15 tick. This is, this is a 15 outside. Okay, here we go. There's my nissle. I'm going to go straight in on the nissle. My left eye is going to be dominant. Okay, I'm re-gearing. I'm re-gearing right now. The SP-15 uh, left object ball tick is in place. The rotational edge for the outside, left side of the cue ball is in place. My tip placement is based 90 ticks away from right here. There's only one place that I can put my cue alignment for seeing the solution to this shot. Okay, my left eye is dominant for seeing down the missile. It's my mid-phase vision center that's dominant for seeing my tip at center. I've spent more time learning to shoot straight ends correctly than any other alignment within the context of CTE Pro 1. This was the toughest one uh, to become thoroughly proficient with. Half ball pivoting, 
I'm going to go all in here with just gearing. Let's start off with the uh, left cue ball edge aiming line. Keep in mind that both pivots are going to be from left to right. And essentially it's the same thing as basic CTE, but at my skill level, I'm going to focus on the inside gearing in relation to the outside gearing for this shot. So here we go. So as I go down, I'm gearing. Gear, 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 gear. I'm on the uh, nissle. Every, gearing's perfect. The inside of the cue ball is geared perfectly in relation to the outside of the cue ball. This is the way you really line up for straight ends. Any of these approaches will work. You know, I do not remember which aiming edge I used that time. Um, so I'm going to start over again with the, with the left edge. Sorry. So here we go. Left edge. I think I used the left, but we'll see. So there we go. It's all done. Everything's intact. Then we'll use the right aiming edge. <clears throat> yeah, there's my 15 degree perception. Okay, I've already, there's my 15 degree perception. I already see the step line from here. So as I go down, I'm just angling out to the left. I'm gearing the inside of the cue ball in relation to the outside of the cue ball, tweaking my bridge speed to be on the nissle so that when I so that when I pivot, I'm in the perfect center for pocketing this ball. So that's a look at straight ends. I'll say a ton more about straight ends in my book. They are actually, they may be the hardest shots to shoot at all. Because I, I, I think the straight in, I think the visual perception must be perfect. The physical alignment and the physical execution must be perfect. There's a lot of things that just must be perfect in order to get the desired result. So there's just an there's just a union that must occur between the visual and the physical for shooting dead on stop shots. You know, in order to get the cue ball just to squat. But as far as understanding straight ends, uh, it, it took me many, many years to get to the understanding that I, I wanted to have uh, so that I could say that I totally understand center to edge aiming and straight ends. Um, straight ends are 15 degree perceptions, not 30s. If the outer edge, outer cutting edge of the object ball is uh, used uh, during the visual process, it's as a rotational tick not as a sight line. The shot has an inherent tick, rotational tick, located at the SP15 for every which side that the shot line uh, or the sight line is located on. Um, thank you for your attention for this, what I term as an historical uh, presentation because you're seeing for the first time publicly how to really see uh, 
straight in shot for center and a center and a center relationship. This wraps up video 14. Uh, for the next couple of videos, we're going to take a look at outside spin and then inside spin. And that's going to wrap up the initial uh, uh, true series videos that will be uh, presented in conjunction with the release of my book. Please support uh, these efforts of mine and the true series can continue. So if you like what you're getting here, I, I, I truly believe that you'll love what's in the book. See you in video 15.